Welcome to another episode here in the studio. We are here to discuss today Enamolta's preferential tariff for EV owners. So if you are charging at home and you want to get a fixed preferential rate while charging your EV, today's information is going to be very, very important. This is your reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'm Luke and this is The Future is Electric. Today we are joined by Mr. John Caruana, an engineer from Enamolta. Thank you for being with us. The Enamolta EV tariff is quite a hot topic on the EV group. We get a lot of questions, so I'm glad we're doing this video so we can clear all these questions up. So firstly, what is this, this scheme? Well, the scheme is about um, having a charging uh, connection, mm -hmm. okay, by having a um, uh, a EV meter, both for single phase and three phase, uh, for domestic or residential connections and also non residential. Right, so, and uh, you get a, a fixed rate, right? So it's not like the usual electricity where the price fluctuates in bands. There is a fixed rate? Yes, there are rates which are uh, off peak rates, which are fixed. Uh, the purpose is to, uh, to your consumption for the EV charger. It's not affecting your consumption at home exactly. or in your business. When uh, this scheme was announced, I think three years ago, I think the pilot project mm -hmm. started more or less. I remember my, me and my dad were very excited because um, we, or my father, really came to the realization that he had had an EV at that point for two years. And in those two years, although we had all the infrastructure to charge at home. He literally charged at home only twice. Because <laughs> we're conscious of the fact that if we're going to charge at home, the car is going to add another 2,000 units to the home consumption, and that would have made us go up to the next band Bad. of electricity. So, so I think that's what the viewers really have to understand here, is that this is about making sure that you keep your consumption stable, even though you're adding the car now, that you won't go up to a more expensive band, is that correct? Yes, that, it is correct, yeah. And in fact, the off-peak uh, tariffs uh, are for this purpose, where uh, you incentivize to have an electric car, but at the same time, you will keep your consumption as was before you had your electric vehicle. Exactly. So you've already mentioned it, but um, you can apply both if you have a single phase and three phase supply. What are the differences in terms of cost, for example? Well, the, uh, for a single phase uh, connection, you, uh, the, the cost is uh, 50 euros for the application and 80 euros for the three phase. Okay. Uh, the benefit of having three phase is more, you can have more charging power exactly. as against the single phase charger. And in terms of the, you will need to pay a meter rent per month, right? Of course, yes. Uh, for the domestic, it is uh, for the residential, it is for uh, single phase and six euros for the three phase. Okay. And uh, for the non-residential, it is six and eight euros, respectively. Okay. What preparation needs to be done by either the consumer or, or his electrician before an emoto can come and set up the, this, this scheme? Uh, the electrician or his engineer must uh, prepare uh, the, um, the electric charger for mm -hmm. the car and uh, also, of course, the necessary protection, like a circuit breaker, and the isolator before okay. and behind the EV meter. And then, of course, uh, apply, uh, provide a space for the uh, EV meter, which is about 30 centimeters, 20 and 20 depth. It is similar to the normal meter. It is similar very to the normal meter. And um, then he can provide the application to arms limited for pro processing. Okay. It's good to mention here that on one of the documents you provide, there is a, a whole uh, schematic yes. of everything that needs to the be The schematic prepared. is available on Enamalta website. Uh, and of course, there are also some FAQs there as well, the frequent, um, where this is the purpose is to guide the, the customers to prepare the necessary connections. Exactly. Now, another question I, I often get asked is, let's say my garage has no power supply. Can I still apply? What's the process there? Yes, uh, if uh, your garage is in a building, but you don't have, you are not living there, for example, but you own a garage there, it is lockable, you can still apply for uh, a new service application, normal uh, standard meter, and an EV meter 
for the purpose of EV charging. Exactly. So you will then get two new meters. One two for new the meters, first supply, yes. and then one is just That's for right. the EV meter. And of course, these uh, two new meters must be in, uh, near the other uh, block meters okay. uh, for uh, for safety purposes, etc. And um, just to circle back a bit and to make it clear to the viewers, the actual charger is being provided by the, the user. So an to just install uh, a new meter, so, so to speak. That's the, right, the, yes. The charging infrastructure is something you have to take care of yourself before yes. the installation. Yes, and Amalta is responsible only for the installation of the EV meter. Exactly. The rest is uh, the client. So there is a preferential rate of 12 cents 9. Mm -hmm. um, what hours of the day does this rate become applicable? Yes, uh, we call them the off-peak periods. Uh, one is between midnight and 6 uh, a.m. Okay. The other is between midday and 4 p.m. And Sunday all day. Okay. These are the preferential uh, dates or time frames for... And this is whether it's single phase or three phase, those are the times? Yes, those are the times, yes. Okay. And once you start receiving your, your electricity, the electricity bill, there is a separate line item for this EV meter, the preferential rate. Correct, yeah. Um, <coughs> can there be a separate bill if maybe people need it for accounting purposes? Well, uh, usually it's, as you said, uh, it's uh, shown on, uh, on the actual bill. But of course, uh, this has to be discussed with Arms Limited if you need some separate uh, information for the bill. Is there a, a capping on the weekly or monthly units that one can consume in this preferential tariff? No, there are no cappings in, the, in terms of charging, not like the PV systems uh, for charging of cars, electric vehicles, it's not there. Right, so if I installed <coughs> the system and we add another MV in the family who's also going to use the system, it will keep working? It could be working, provided that uh, there is only one EV meter. And one yeah. EV, exactly, one EV meter. Is it possible to apply for this scheme before you get the car? Uh, no, uh, before you... Uh, to apply, you need the, the logbook for right. the EV car, so uh, it's part of the documents that you need with the application. Exactly. So it is not possible. But of course, uh, the customer can start preparing all the necessary installation work by the electrician, so that once the logbook is available, he can pro uh, submit the application. And generally, once there is the application, I think the process is relatively fast, not a few weeks. Yes, yes, more yes. Or less, so no, it's no, not more like or less. So, yeah. so much less than you take waiting for the car to arrive, that's, that's for right. sure. That's right. <laughs> so, very good. So, there are some consumers, I myself have solar panels, mm -hmm. and you get paid, I know it's different depending on when you apply, but let's say 15 cents five for charging using, uh, for selling electricity from the right. panels. And I'm charging the car at 12 cents nine with this scheme. However, in theory, then you're not really charging using the solar power, which is obviously quite a good end goal that we should get to as a society to, to, to run the cars on renewable energy directly. D is there going to be any incentive to, uh, to people who have this circumstance that you have the panels, you have the electric car, for me to, to, to start charging on the panels? Well, uh, the tariffs as they are uh, defines, as you said, the, the cost or the the amount that you are paid for from the PV system. But of course, the setup in your home uh, it is decided by, by yourself. So you can decide to, instead of selling all from the PV system, you can uh, make it for your own use, and then part of it will be for the charging. But then uh, you will end up might having the, the cost going in other bands, if for some reason uh, some power is coming from, from the grid instead of from the PV. Okay. So you have to do your own calculations. Right, right. It's a case by case basis. It's a case by case you. basis. So for those who live in an apartment block, and let's say there are, let's say they're communal garage spaces, so they're not lock up. They're sometimes they're like sort of open plan. Mm -hmm. Can someone in this circumstance apply for the EV meter? Well, the present uh, electricity supply regulations does not allow this. Okay. Um, but uh, there are some discussions ongoing at the moment uh, that we are considering this. There is a technical aspect and so the legal aspect of this and uh, we are going in that direction as well to be able to, 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 to apply for... What if they're lock-up garages? Does that change everything then? 
No, the garage, if it's lockable garage, you can apply. If it's lockable, yeah, you can apply. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier. Okay, okay, okay. It's lockable because it's under lock and key and... Right, right. The only issue in inverted commas I say there is that most of the times, or at least from my memory of the ones I know, mm. a lot of the meters, electricity meters, mm. tend to be in the communal area, like on the first floor near the lift, so they're not necessarily near the garage. Yes. Can the person still apply in that case? Yes, provided that the EV meter is near the other meters as well. Okay, so the EV meter so is, will be stuck near the other meters on the first floor, but the person then will need to run a cable. That's right, down yeah, because to the, uh, the supply regulations uh, emphasize this that uh, all sources coming in a building must be at one point. Right. Jumping to a slightly different mm -hmm. topic. Um, originally, you launched this as a pilot scheme, mm -hmm. so there were a few applications where the this was done just to see how, how, how things work, so I guess. Right. Um, originally in the pilot scheme you had a timer, which was regulating the, the preferential or out of, yes, correct. Out of the, the special hours. Now I believe you've removed the timer, correct? Yes, uh, the, the timer box sort of uh, is, is now removed because uh, EV chargers can um, be set to charge in off-peak periods. Exactly. And or uh, from the car itself. Or from the car itself, correct. And else, it's up to the customer to decide when, he's plug when he plug in. If he prefers to plug in and, uh, on peak periods, it's up to him. <laughs> this <laughs> actually, I part. think actually this actually makes a lot of sense. As you're saying, um, I haven't come across a car which doesn't have a timer. Um, the, the chargers themselves, um, Maybe the low-end ones don't have timers, but a bit higher-end have yeah, timers as well. Right. And I think what used to happen as well with the old system, where we had to switch between uh, echo mode and normal mode, is that some cars are going to take longer to charge than those six hours from midnight Correct. to 6 a.m. Yeah, that, that was one of the issues that we were facing, so uh, avoiding that box is better. Also avoiding any failures as well. Exactly. And the box itself. And now the installation is smaller, so it's going to take less space. Uh, less space, etc. Very good. So one, what does one need to do to apply? Well, basically, after uh, all the necessary preparations that uh, the electrician has to do, then one has to download a form from Arms Limited mm -hmm. or from Enamalta website and uh, fill the form accordingly, provide all the documents such as the customer ID, electrician signature and ID, and also uh, the EV logbook, and then submit the application to Arms Limited. Excellent. Then following that, Enamalta will provide the service. Very good. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, both John and there's Michaela here as well from Enamalta. And um, I'd like to give a shout out to Peter as well, who's helping out with all the technical today. Stargate for providing the facility and Enamalta, of course, for collaborating on this video. I know you've definitely found the information in this video very interesting. Um, I think this topic will continue to evolve as, as time goes by and there's more users and maybe we start to hear about um, the, the, the communal block example, for example, and sort of opening up. So um, do keep an eye out for, for these updates. Um, but other than that, I hope this conversation has convinced you that the future is electric.